For the following exercises, find the slope of the line that passes through the two given points. All right, so remember, slope is generally found in two formulas. Take a look down here on the bottom right. Slope is found in the equation for a linear line, y equals mx plus b. Slope is also found in what I'm gonna call the slope formula. Slope formula. Actually, I don't know if I'm just calling that. I'm sure other people call it that too. But I'm just gonna call it the slope formula here. Now, the slope formula, as I have written it down here, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You might have also seen it as change in y over change in x. You might have also known it as rise over run. They're all literally the same thing, okay? I like to know it this way. I think it makes the most sense. Although all the other ways are equivalent, I just like to uh, list it out the way I have it here. I feel like uh, it reminds you what you need to know. But sometimes when you think of change in y over change in x, you forget that you need two points, all right? But this solidifies the idea, in my opinion, that you need two points. Why? Well, let me write it out. The reason why is because if you notice here, look at the pattern. You have one coordinate here. You have an x value and a y value, and we labeled it 2. And the 2 just represents one point. And then we have an x and a y value over here, and we labeled it 1 because it's another point. All right. So this formula tells you basically that you need two points in order to, in order to determine the slope. Now, I have two points. So knowing that and knowing that this formula needs two points, I know I can find the slope. OK, now it doesn't matter to me which point you call number one and which point you call number two. You can call this one number one, this one number two or vice versa. Really has does not matter. You're going to come up with the same answer. Try it both ways and see if it works out. If it doesn't, something's wrong with the math because it should. So let's first define this one as maybe point one, and we'll define this one as then point two. If I do that, watch how I'm gonna set this up. You know that every coordinate has an X value and a Y value, okay? And X always comes first, and Y always comes second. So this is the X and this is the Y. All I'm gonna do now, since I'm calling this my first point, I'm just gonna put a little one down there. Similarly, when I look at this point, I'm going to write X comma Y, and then since I defined it as my second point, I'm literally just going to put a 2 and a 2. Now it's as easy as plugging in and solving. That's it. Part of the difficulty sometimes with math is being able to set up the problem for yourself in order to solve it. The problem is not in the solving, I find, with a lot of students. The problem is in setting up an equation to use and then figuring out how to plug stuff in in order to find it. Right? That's where the that's where doing a lot of practice comes in handy and seeing it done also is very helpful. So let's write this down now. So the slope is going to be y2. I defined y2 as 6. Okay, so cool, it's going to be 6. Minus y1, which is negative 2. So you have to plug that in as negative 2. Do not assume that this negative takes that into account. It does not. Okay. Divide it by now y, uh, x2, which we called 4 minus then x1, which is 8. So now all I need to do is just simply solve this. So we realize that 6 minus a negative 2, right? There's a double negative, so that's really a positive, and therefore it's 6 plus 2, which is 8. And then we're going to simply divide that now by 4 minus 8, which works out to be a negative 4. And when I do the math here, it's going to become a negative 2. So that is the slope. That's it. Now, let's run through the next one. Two points, you're going to use your slope formula. The slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. By the way, BTW, whenever, you do, uh, whenever you're using formulas, I always suggest you always write them out. It's an easy way to begin to memorize these formulas without actually having to sit down and do like flashcards or something like that. All right? Every time you use a formula, always write out the general formula first. It, it will help you memorize it, and it will help you recall it, probably on the test when it's most important, okay? Even though tests aren't really important overall in terms of general life, but we got to get through them, okay? So, actually, the strategy and how to approach this is what's important. The thought pattern, the problem-solving ability, that's what's important. That's what you want to take away from this. So, enough of the philosophical discussion. Let's get back to the math. So let's define the first point as the, as, as the uh, well, I basically told you as the first point, right? So it's going to be x1, y1, and this is going to be x2, y2. And let's just start plugging some stuff in. I define my y2 as 3. 
I defined my y1 as 11. I defined my x2 as negative 4 minus now I defined my x1 as 6. And lo and behold, all we have to simply do is calculate this. Right, so 3 minus 11 will be a negative 8 divided then by negative 4 minus 6. It's a negative negative and therefore it's basically an addition, which would be negative 10. Now what you can do, you can get this in decimal form, you can leave it in fractional form, you can just reduce it, it doesn't matter to me. They're both equivalent, all right? I'm gonna just gonna leave it in fractional form, um, but I'll, I will reduce it. Notice that there's a common two, so I can pull out a two essentially, right? Or divide both by two. So this would be four over five. And what else can I get rid of? Well, it's a double negative. So double negative is always a positive, you know that, right? So here's the slope, four fifths. It is positive, and that's it. The other value would have been 0.8 right? In terms of a decimal. So guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope this helps. If it did, if you wouldn't mind helping us out, hit that subscribe button. That'd be awesome. The like button too. Smash the bejesus out of it. And uh, even better yet, if we were able to help you, we might be able to help some of your friends. So if you wouldn't mind, you know, telling them about our videos, we would appreciate that very much. Have a great day.